My name is Jody Bromer. Currently, at this moment, I am a lecturer at SUU for aviation studies. I also part-time as a per diem pilot for air methods as an EMS helicopter pilot. I run single engine helicopters, A-STARS and 407s. I've been flying in the industry as a paid pilot for going on six years now. Started flying in 2011 at, in Salt Lake and have done a lot of high density altitude flight training and then high density altitude industry work too. The reason to choose perhaps the aviation industry is the office. And at the end of this, you're supposed to know why you want to be a helicopter pilot. I'm not an office person. I don't do well stuck inside. So I chose military immediately after high school. I didn't think I was ready for college. How, do you, how are you supposed to know what you want to do the rest of your life? But I went into the Navy, did construction, decided that you can't do construction for the rest of your life. So I found out about flight training, went to flight school, loved it, have done airplanes, helicopters, multi-engine, airplane, single engine, tail wheel. The flight training was the best part because when you're doing high density altitude flight training, the experience you have to the industry is the most important part. Because high density altitude training is something that you can't get everywhere in the world. So a sea level pilot versus uh, like Cedar City 5,600 pilot are two different pilots. The, the training you receive are two different things. And it's not saying anything against training at sea level because it's fantastic training, but to actually understand and utilize the techniques to deal with density altitude is really important in the industry by far. In fact, my flight interviews consist of high density altitude approaches to make sure I understand the risks associated. When you're flying in the industry, you're often towards the max of your, your allowable profile. You're, you're towards the, the max of your weight, your performance, and that's just an everyday uh, exercise that happens to you. So in order to understand the consequences of being a pilot, you need to train at density altitude to really fly well. There's kind of what we consider like a three-tier as far as industry goes. Now, you're not gonna make a ton of money being a pilot, but you'll make enough money. To, to do the pilot thing for money is not, is not healthy. If you wanna be a pilot and you happen to make good money doing it, that's the kind of people that we need in the industry. Because it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of sacrifice to be, to be a pilot. You gotta take some of those low level jobs that don't pay a lot in order to get your experience and prove that you're a viable entity to the industry. So your first year job be t tours, uh, flight instruction, some low level utility work with low time experience. It doesn't pay very well, but you get a lot of experience. You get a lot of confidence in your abilities, and also you make a, a serious amount of connections. When you're at those low tier jobs, you really demonstrate what kind of pilot you actually are, as far as how hard you're willing to work, your decision making skills, your time management skills, your love for the job. And once you establish those things, you start to garner a reputation and the industry take, takes note. So working really hard in those low paying jobs is really important because you're demonstrating to the world what kind of pilot you are. So the better pilot you are when you're paid the least really translates to the rest of your career. And plus the networking you make. Your, your students as a CFI will be in the industry with you and you want to be proud when you run into that student who's now working side by side with you. And you know, be happy to walk up and shake his hand and congratulate that he's survived, you know, the industry and is making his way. It's, it's a really wonderful feeling, actually. So, but once you get into your second tier or third tier level jobs, is where you actually start making some money to pay you back for all the suffering you went through, all the sacrifices you've made and, and all the long hours you've pulled. And it's really rewarding when you get into your second tier and third tier, because you're, you're doing potentially EMS, which is 
You get that call at 3 a.m., you go out under goggles, and you pick up somebody that's been in a really terrible traffic accident. You know, they're dying, literally dying, and you get to pick that person up off the side of the highway and fly them to the hospital. And they don't technically need you, but if you think about it, an ambulance takes two hours to get from a rural place to a hospital, whereas the helicopter, I can have them to the hospital in 30 minutes. And 30 minutes versus two hours is the difference between life and death. So EMS is exceptionally rewarding in that aspect. You, you do have a lot of downtime though. And you have a good schedule. EMS has a great schedule. You know what you're gonna be doing. You know you're gonna be working nights or you know you're gonna be working days. Utility is where all the cool stuff is. All the firefighting, all the, the power line work where you're lifting these things and you pick up a guy and stick him in between sets of power lines and put him on the pole so that he can, it's really tactile work. You know, you're really working the helicopter to do what you need and short haul, short haul is where you're hauling uh, a person, a live body on a 50 foot rope, inserting them into all sorts of sticky situations where maybe it's a search and rescue where you got to pull somebody out of a slot canyon or uh, law enforcement work where you're you're dropping SWAT guys in to, uh, so that they can take down some sort of criminal. Then you have law enforcement side, which does all kinds, of, they kind of do everything. They can do search and rescue, they can even help out the state's DNR, law enforcement of course, but you know, law enforcement piloting is kind of the, kind of the all around. You get to do a lot of things, but it doesn't necessarily pay that well and you gotta know which unit to get into. But there's a lot of jobs. There's a helicopter for something. If there's a need and it needs to be done with any sort of speed, then you use a helicopter. It's, it's, uh, it's fun, it's fast, and there's nothing like a rotor wash coming down with that wop wop. Uh, the fire guys love it, so I love it. I love my job, my office is wicked cool, and you can always bounce around. You know, there's a lot of different opportunities out there and it's good to actually try a lot of those opportunities. It gets you a lot of experience. And the more experience you have, the more viable you are. As a female in the aviation industry is fairly unique. Not because women don't want to do this. I think maybe we forget that we can. Perhaps we get caught up in doing uh, kind of our normal roles as, you know, raising kids and stuff, which being a pilot and Raising children is difficult for fathers and mothers, but I don't see any difference being a woman or a man in the job. It doesn't really matter. You're a pilot. Uh, I will argue that women tend to have a, a more sensitivity to tactile inputs, but it's, if you want to do the job, do the job. Don't. There's no excuse for being a woman or not a woman. It's kind of irrelevant. So. Yeah, have fun, pick a job that you want to do. Thanks for watching this video. We gotta go do pilot stuff. Just like, subscribe, give us, a, give us a thumbs up if you found this helpful. And we'll see you next time.